very good afternoon everyone i am dr neha gupta i am consultant fetal medicine specialist uh, in kailash hospital noida sector 27 what is an effective screening now traditionally it was based on the maternal age from what we calculate the a priori risk or the background risk now initially all the women who were more than 35 years of age were offered inv invasive testing but the pitfall was that that it had only detection rate of 30% so screening based on maternal age is not recommended why because no age is immune now in the second trimester screening we have two tests that is the triple marker and the quadruple screening test triple marker screening test has a predictive accuracy of only 60% and it is no longer recommended quadruple screening test has a predictive accuracy of about 70 to 75% so it's not considered as a good enough test so if you see this table this table summarizes it all at a false positive rate of 5% maternal age detection rate is only 30% when you do maternal age <clears throat> plus ultrasound parameter that is nt plus the dual marker the the detection rate varies from 85 to 95% but when newer markers are added the advantage is that the detection rate increases to 93 to 96% but more important fact is that that the false positive rate goes down to half that is 2.5% in the patient characteristics the following factors are to be mentioned properly because <clears throat> they influence the measured concentrations of beta hcg and pape to calculate the patient specific risk these include maternal age and the gestational age maternal weight and bmi ethnicity smoking status diabetes method of conception and machines and reagent used Ethnicity is important because black race tends to have higher values of beta hcg and pape if that is not taken into account you will have underestimation of the risk similarly ivf conception smoking diabetics they tend to have lower pape values you should tell whether it's a spontaneous or an ivf conception because it influences the mom values of the analytes like over here if i enter for the same values as spontaneous conception the pape value is about 0.47 but for ivf pregnancies the pape value further goes down to 0.39 if i enter it as an ivf and hence the patient risk for developing a weak baby are much higher sample that is collected if it is a whole blood it has to be assessed within 48 hours if it is a serum it has to be assessed within 72 hours because beyond these periods the assessment of free beta hcg is unreliable we should use fmf approved uh, assays and platforms these are like cryptor by brahams delphia platform by perkin elmer and rosh and risk calculation because all these labs they undergo registration and then software is provided by the fmf that is a very important aspect because these assays demonstrate excellent precision and all these labs they undergo a stringent internal quality and external quality control mechanisms the best gestational age to do screening is between 11 to 13 plus 6 weeks when the crl is between 45 to 84 mm where we can assess the uh, baby and the genetic markers like nuchal translucency blood flows through the tummy the ductus venosus blood flows through heart tricuspid doppler now in the two step approach the blood sample that is the dual marker is given at 10 weeks and the ultrasound is done at 12 weeks now this is the best method because with this the detection rate approach is about 93 to 94% in one stop cleaning both are done at the same time that is both is are given at around 12 weeks now here the detection rate is about 85% so if possible follow a two step approach mom stands for multiples of median They, the values are biochemical analytes they change with gestation and are expressed as moms the moms tells us how close a patient value is to that is to the median value for that week of pregnancy now case one spontaneous conception 31 year old primary gravida with unremarkable history presented at 12 weeks 5 days her scan was all uh, normal crl corresponding to the gestational age the nt was normal ductus tricuspid dopplers were all normal now she came with this dual marker report now these are absolute values they have no meaning at all the values in the table provided below are basically the values with which the are the median values with which we calculate the moms so mom is actually the patient's observed value divided by the median value for that gestational age so how do i explain these moms now whenever you generate this ratios whenever you divide the patient's observed value with the median value anything around 1 should be normal 
So 0.18 PAPE means I have rounded off to 0.2. That means the value of PAPE is one fifth of the value that is expected for that week of the pregnancy. Similarly, 0.8 means it is four fifth of the expected value. PAPE is pregnancy associated plasma protein A, which is produced by the syncytiotrophoblast. Uh, it's basically acts as a protease for this insulin, this pink colored insulin growth factor binding protein four. Now, what happens is that that insulin growth factor binding protein, it binds to the insulin growth factor so that the insulin growth factor is not available. And why this, this insulin growth factor, it binds to these receptors and helps in the trophoblastic invasion. Now, if there are low levels of PAPE, we will be having higher levels of this binding protein, which will bind to the insulin growth factor, as a result of which we have low IGF levels. And so first trimester screening based on maternal age, NT and dual marker, we have these three situations, high risk, intermediate risk and low risk. Now, whenever it's a low risk, low risk means that the probability is really low. There is a two per, less than 2% chance that there could be a risk for trisomy 21. And you follow it up then at, anomaly, at the time of anomaly scan. High risk means you can offer directly them invasive testing. But what we follow is we follow <clears throat> an extended first trimester screening where we assess the fetus. We combine more markers of the ultrasound. We take up these new markers that is nasal bone, tricuspid regurgitation, ductus venosus, along with the dual marker. In the contingent screening protocol, the more the markers you combine, the more the predictive accuracy is. In fact, you can use here or also first trimester triple or a first trimester cord. Similarly, in the intermediate risk group, one in 100 to one in 1000, uh, we go ahead with this extended first trimester screening protocol. Now, beta HCG is actually the hormone which is produced by the syncytial trophoblast and maintains the pregnancy by stimulating progesterone synthesis. And we actually measure the free beta HCG. So extreme values, high values are not associated with any adverse outcomes. Low values can be associated with adverse outcomes. And I had, as I had said earlier, that the predictive accuracy is really, really low. So this is the table that you can take into account that how these markers are associated with adverse pregnancy outcome. As I had said earlier, that beta HCG in PAPE dual marker report, do look at the values. Now, anything around one should be normal. So uplight pregnancies have these values of beta HCG in PAPE nearing one. But if you see a high beta HCG or a low PAPE, uh, you should get alarmed about trisomy 21. Similarly, very low beta HCG and very low PAPE uh, are seen in trisomy 13 and 18. Another uh, case, 31-year-old primary gravida uh, presented to us with this report, trisomy 21 report as 1 in 267. Now, this wasn't an intermediate risk. The couple was quite, but this is an incomplete report. Why? Because only biochemistry was used in calculating the risk. So as I had mentioned earlier that the biochemistry alone has a detection rate of only 60 to 70 percent. When you add NT, the detection rate goes beyond 85 percent. So always do combined screening and not alone biochemistry. But not all biochemistry is misleading. So we had this patient at 33 year old at 12 weeks, two days with a very high risk for trisomy 21, one in nine. Uh, the ultrasound done outside showed normal parameters of NT and nasal bone. Her beta HCG was very high, 4.5 mom, and PAPE was low, 0.2 mom. So I offered the combined screening to her because if the scan is normal, so we might get these risks within the intermediate range because we would be combining more markers. A word about first trimester triple and quad. Now here in this, first trimester triple is when PLGF is added. First trimester quad is that PLGF and AFP are added. They're basically to enhance the predictive accuracy or the performance of the first trimester screening. Alone biochemistry, if you see the predictive accuracy with first trimester triple, that is where PLGF is only there, increases to about 80%. With quad, it increases to about 82%. So what you have to understand is that when we do a combined screening, combined screening means that is uh, the first trimester screening based on maternal age, NT, dual, plus PLGF, our detection rate improves to 90%. So by adding PLGF, we increases the detection rate by 2 to 3%. ASPRI trial was very uh, clear to us that when you combine maternal history with uterine artery dopplers with uh, blood pressure with the dual uh, test along with the PLGF. Uh, so those were considered as screen positive where the value was greater than one in 100. 
So the detection rate for this was 90% for pre for, pre uh, for women developing preeclampsia less than 32 weeks and overall less than 70, about 77%. And aspirin was uh, really uh, good in these cases, 150 milligram when you start before 16 weeks, it can reduce the incidence of preterm preeclampsia and that's that 60%. In twins, we do maternal age anti-assessment and dual marker. What we have to understand is that, that for dichorionic pregnancies, the risk is twice that of singleton and for monochorionic, it is same as singleton. So like, for example, for at 35 years of age, if the risk for trisomy 21 is one in 250 for a singleton, it is same for monozygotic pregnancy. And it is double for that of dizygotic pregnancy. As far as quadruple screening test is concerned, the consensus is that if, there, if the patient has made the first trimester screening, then you should go for quad. So uh, in the quad, you should just, uh, I want to just highlight two facts. One is low yeast triols. If the value is less than 0.25, you should send them to a, for genetic consultation because these could be at high risk for developing Smith, Lemley, Optis, or steroid sulfurase deficiency. Similarly, high AFP values, more than 2.2 or 2.5 mom, usually comes as high risk for open neural tube defects. Now, a good quality detailed, good quality level two scan can easily rule out open neural tube defects. So you have to counsel the patients that these patients are at high risk for developing high blood pressures, preterm labor, IUGR, or adherent placental disorders.